Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's James Vondell. I work at uh, ECMWF. Um, and yeah, I'm going to talk about the Climate and Atmosphere Data Store. Uh, apologies for the very wordy title uh, of three very similar acronyms. So hopefully, if the talk is a success, you will uh, understand what all these things are by the end. Um, but before we get on to that, uh, I'm here from ECMWF, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. For those of you who don't know us, we're an intergovernmental organization. Uh, we have 23 member, straight, member states and 12 cooperating states. And I think we now have over 400 staff across sites in Reading, Bonn, and Bologna. Um, we are a 24-7 operational numerical weather prediction center supporting uh, national weather services and businesses. Uh, and we are a research institution researching uh, improvements to our uh, weather and climate models, along with climate reanalysis and reforecasts. And we currently operate two EU Copernicus climate services, so the Climate Change Service, C3S, the Atmosphere Monitoring Service, CAMS, and we also support the Emergency Management Service, CHEMS. Um, so Copernicus, uh, if you don't know, is the European Union's Earth Observation Program. So it's all about taking data from a variety of sources, uh, including satellite data, uh, in situ observations, but also model data from climate and seasonal forecast models, um, ingesting these into the six core Copernicus services, including the Climate Change Service and CAMS, and then producing downstream services, uh, such as applications, bulletins, reports, um, for our very wide range of uh, interdisciplinary users, uh, which include scientists, software developers, but also um, policymakers, journalists, and the general public. Um, so I'm going to focus on the climate change service today. So C3S provides information about the past, present, and future climate, along with tools to support adaptation and mitigation policies. Um, so we support a wide range of sectors, from water management and agriculture, down to tourism, biodiversity, uh, and many more. And we also issue monthly climate bulletins, um, which present the current state of the global climate every month based on key climate change indicators. And we also operate the Climate Data Store, the CDS, which is what I'm going to focus on today. So the CDS is an online open data catalog offering a wide range of climate change data sets. And the core principle is that it is a simple uh, and relevant uh, catalog for makes it as easy as possible to discover and access climate change data. Um, we also offer, on top of the data, a wide range of online tools for analysis, visualization, and also some interactive web applications as well for exploring graphically uh, the data that we have available in the CDS. Um, and the hope is that this will enable reproducible research and empower our users to spend less time handling the data and help them get to their results much, much quicker. Um, so there are, I think, nearly 140 data sets in the CDS now, but there are four main kinds of data sets. Uh, these include observations, uh, including satellite observations and in situ observations, climate reanalyses, which combine observations with models to uh, generate consistent time series. Um, so if any of you are familiar with ERA 5, that's the flagship uh, uh, reanalysis data set generated at ECMWF. Um, which has uh, hourly reanalysis back to 1950. Um, that's the most popular data set in the CDS. Um, we also broker seasonal forecasts uh, from seasonal prediction systems from around the world. And uh, the, as these forecasts are updated, the latest data is updated in the CDS. You can always get the latest information. Uh, and also climate projections data. So these are models which project future climate change for different greenhouse gas concentration scenarios. And if any of you are familiar with the CMIP projects, uh, CMIP 5, CMIP 6, and Cordex are all uh, data sets that you can uh, access through the CDS. So the uh, core design principles of the CDS, it's a distributed system made up of sort of six core components. Um, the most important thing is obviously the data. So we have uh, lots and lots of different data suppliers, and they all provide us data in many different formats through many different interfaces um, and different endpoints. So some of them are accessible over HTTP, some of them using OpenDAP, some of them using web processing services, all sorts of things. Um, but, uh, and also they're all in different file formats. We, we broker data in CSV, in GRIB, NetCDF, um, TIFF, shapefiles, all sorts of things. Uh, but crucially, we want to provide our users a unified web interface that takes away any of the hassle of uh, understanding all the different data suppliers and having just a single place they can go to uh, access their data. And we also 
want the data wherever possible to be interoperable. Uh, so we have what we call a common data model, or CDM, which we use to uh, st standardize or harmonize the data from our various suppliers so that they can be understood by our uh, compute tools, um, which we make available to users to analyze and visualize the, the data sets. Um, so the CDS has been operational since 2018, and we have over 140,000 registered users. Uh, we currently have 139 data sets in our catalog, and we serve over 100 terabytes of data daily, um, and sometimes up to a petabyte a week. Um, and we've recently migrated the CDS to our new data center in Bologna, which we were lucky enough to visit on Monday this week. So that's a photo of my colleague Eddie uh, inspecting the system on Monday. Um, and we have uh, also 34 interactive web applications, um, which you can, um, which are nice GUI interfaces to uh, explore data that's available in the CDS. Uh, so this is usually where I do a, a quick demo. Um, so apologies for the slightly wonky PowerPoint uh, animations. So um, when you go to the CDS, you can search for data uh, using a faceted search. So you can ask specifically for uh, different spatial domains, different variable domains, uh, temporal coverage. Um, or you can search for something specific if you know what you want. So in this case, I've searched for the ERA-5 reanalysis data set that I mentioned earlier. Um, and when you click on a data set, you're presented with this overview. So this explains what the data set is, gives you a description of its uh, you know, temporal resolution, uh, coverage, spatial coverage, all of the important information you need to know. Um, and then you can click on this download data tab at the top which uh, produces a web form. And this is where you can specifically uh, decide exactly which data you're interested in downloading. So you can subset each data set uh, to pick the, the variables, the time steps, the spatial coverage that you're interested in looking at. Um, so in this case, for the ERA-5 reanalysis data set, we have a two meter temperature um, from the reanalysis. And if I could scroll down, you would see there's also, um, you can select the temporal coverage you're interested in, the years, months, and days, and then click on a, a submit button at the bottom, which will fire off your request. And when it's done, give you a nice URL to, um, to the data that you've requested. We also have a quality assessment of our data sets. Um, so these are assessed by an independent evaluation and quality control team. And they uh, essentially, they assess the technical and scientific quality of each data set. So you can read about all of that under this tab. And then we also have documentation if you uh, are interested in uh, the, the finer detail, more information about any of the data sets and how they were generated. So that was uh, just for the uh, ERA-5 data set. But um, crucially, for all of our data sets, we have the same simple and consistent interface. So here we have a seasonal forecast data set, satellite observations, and climate projections data sets. And in each case, we have a nice, clean, easy to use web form, uh, hiding away all of the um, behind the scenes stuff about all of our different data providers and different endpoints. Um, and I've also put here, we also have a Python API, which you can use to access our data. And if you fill in one of our web forms to select uh, the data you're interested in, we always have a button at the bottom which lets you translate that into a Python API request, which you can then copy into your Python session and make that request from there. So then on top of all this data, we also have the CDS toolbox. So the toolbox is essentially a simple Python editor that lives in your web browser, uh, which you can use to um, retrieve and analyze and visualize all of the data in the CDS. So we have a wide range of tools available, which you can see down the left-hand panel here, for doing anything from statistical analysis to um, producing interactive web maps. Um, and the full catalog of data sets is available directly in the Python uh, API. So you can do all of this in the browser, and no downloads are needed. Um, so I wanted to give a, a quick example here. So I don't know if you can actually uh, read that very well. But uh, in this particular case, I'm retrieving 60 years of data for um, Florence from the era five reanalysis data set and uh, producing climate stripes which show how much hotter or colder each, uh, each year was than the, the long-term average. Um, and we can also produce configurable GUI elements so you can produce, uh, you can choose which month of the year you're interested in looking at, in this case August. Um, and you can see that the past few Augusts have been a little bit hotter than usual in Florence. Um, and we have a wide range of interactive visualizations you can produce, including climate stripes, but also interactive maps and all sorts of other things which I'll show uh, in a bit. And this is also supported by back-end caching. So I mentioned this is using 60 years worth of ERA-5 data. That kind of request is quite big and takes a long time to run. But if you run it once um, and then run the same request again, the results should be uh, cached so that you get it almost instantly. 
And once you develop these sorts of applications in the toolbox, you can share them with other CDS users. And we also have a help and support team who are always available to help with any issues you have, um, along with comprehensive documentation and uh, examples and an application gallery. Um, just one other very brief example, a uh, similar sort of thing, but this time producing an interactive web map. Uh, this one is looking at 30 years of era five reanalysis uh, over uh, the entire globe uh, for the 25th of August, i.e. today, so for the last 30 years, to look at the uh, average temperature on this date every year over the past 30 years. Um, and I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to go from, uh, get, go from our data straight into an interactive web map result using a really simple Python API. And this is all supported by Skinny WMS, which you would have heard about if you attended uh, my colleague Eddie Rosert's talk yesterday. Um, and if you didn't, you can scan that QR code. Hopefully, it will take you to his talk page, and you can view it once it becomes available. Um, but the key message here is that we have data discovery, analysis, and visualization all through one single online platform. Uh, so here's just a few more quick examples of the sorts of features we have available. So we can produce interactive maps with um, additional features like sliders and click events. So clicking on, say, a region in Europe, you can then produce uh, a time series or do a, a, a data extraction at a specific point. Um, we also provide feature-rich and configurable uh, graphical elements. So here's some more complex layouts of applications. Um, and all of these layouts are fully configurable in the Python API in the toolbox. And we also have many, many flexible and customization, visu cu customizable visualization tools, um, including things like the climate stripes that I showed earlier, but also bar charts, line plots, um, all sorts of, of uh, static plots and maps. So we have a catalog of applications in, on the CDS website, which are all produced in the CDS toolbox. Um, so if you go to the CDS website, you can see this Applications tab um, and have a browse. There are currently, I think, 35 published applications. Um, and they all have a, a source code um, tab available in each one, so you can have a look at how they were developed. And uh, you can even copy that source code into your own uh, toolbox space and run them yourself, play with them, um, have a go. Uh, so I'm, I just wanted to show a couple of examples of applications. Uh, and if you scan these QR codes, in theory, it should take you straight to the application, but um, they're not all fully designed for mobile, so uh, you might need to play around with the landscape and portrait to get it working. But um, this is an example of an application looking at uh, 40 years of era five reanalysis over the globe, where you can click on a point and it will show you the typical climate at that point around, around the world. Um, we have another application looking at how close we are to reaching the global warming limit of 1.5 degrees C agreed under the Paris Agreement, and how the rate at which we're approaching that limit has changed over the past uh, months and years. So this one's uh, a very different kind of application um, with a very focused uh, message. And then we also have applications which are aimed at specific uh, sectors, as a, at the sec sectors that I mentioned earlier. So this one's for the health sector, looking at heat wave days and heat related mortality uh, for nine European cities. So um, for this particular application, we can look at Rome and how the number of heat wave days is expected to change uh, under climate change and the effect this could have on the number of heat wave related deaths per year. Um, and I should stress again that all of these applications are fully developed in the CDS toolbox and all of the data sets behind them are all fully available in the CDS catalog. Uh, so finally, I just wanted to mention a few successes and challenges that we've had um, and what our plans are for the future. So all of these applications I've showed you are uh, provided using bespoke services which provide powerful cloud processing. So this all happens online, um, but it requires quite a steep learning curve to fully utilize. So although we are using standard tools like X-Array, Pandas, and Friends uh, behind the scenes, you can't actually make use of those tools directly in the workflows we develop in the toolbox because you have to use our service-based infrastructure. Um, we have a very powerful broker which allows us to process requests for data sets, uh, toolbox workflows, and applications, but it does mean that they all compete for the same resources, which means if, for example, we publish a new application that becomes very popular, that could have an impact on the performance of standard um, data retrieval requests. And also, um, we have our always online platform, so you have to um, develop toolbox workflows in our online editor which means you don't need to download any big data, um, and you can work anywhere in the world on anyone's computer as long as you have your login details. Um, but it's not then possible to work offline, so you can't then copy your Toolbox workflow into your local Python session uh, and then run it alongside your other code. 
So the Climate and, Atmos Climate and Atmosphere Data Store, CADS project, will modernize the CDS. So we've added an A in there, crucially. Um, so the Climate and Atmosphere Data Store will uh, incorporate the C3S Climate Data Store and the CAMS Atmosphere Data Store. So we're incorporating atmospheric data into this new version as well. Um, and there are a few things that we want to do. So we want to move towards a more modular and open source code base uh, that's fully compatible with scientific Python. So moving away from our fully service-based infrastructure and offering users the ability to run things offline uh, using the tools they're familiar with, like X-Ray, Pandas, and the like. Um, we want to introduce improved interfaces to our ever-growing catalog, including the ability to interrogate the availability of data and the status of the service from the Python API. We want to move towards more infrastructure independence, by which I mean we want to have uh, applications hosted using different infrastructure to everything else. So if we have, for example, a popular application, it doesn't um, have any impact on normal users um, downloading data through the normal CDS catalog. Um, we want to have more platform flexibility, which sort of ties in with the modular open source code base I was just talking about. So um, by this, I mean the ability to run online in the cloud as we do now, but also on your local laptop. And we want to move our online um, text editor interface more towards Jupyter so that our cloud resources and web interface can be underpinned by a more familiar um, interface. But crucially, we want to keep our wide range of analysis, visualization, and GUI tools um, in line with the original CDS so that everything that we can do at the moment, we can still do just hopefully in a more flexible and open way. So thank you very much. And should have time for questions. Thanks.